Hello viewers, welcome to AP's 5 minute ophthalmology pearls. Watch, understand and remember anything in ophthalmology in under 5 minutes. Today we will cover the basics of small incision cataract surgery or SICS. So first a little bit of orientation. The surgical technique will be demonstrated with respect to the right eye. Since the surgeon operates from the head end of the patient, this is the superior aspect and this is the inferior aspect. After anesthesia and prepping, a universal wire speculum is inserted to keep the eyelids apart to allow easy exposure for the surgery. It is called universal because it may be used for both the right and the left eyes. Here a superior surgical approach is demonstrated. A superior rectus bridal suture is applied while holding the superior rectus tendon with a dastur superior rectus forceps so as to turn the eyeball slightly inferiorly to maximize surgical exposure. Next is the opening of the conjunctiva or conjunctival peritomy. Using a conjunctival scissors, a fornix based flap is made that is a flap with an incision at the limbus and which is reflected towards the fornix. Bleeders are cauterized with a bipolar cautery. The scleral incision is a triplanar incision which is a self sealing incision. Therefore, this is a sutureless surgery. The first plane of the triplanar incision is made at 30 to 50% of scleral depth, 1.5 to 2 mm from the limbus. The second plane is a scleral tunnel which is carried forward about 1.5 mm into clear cornea and the third plane is the plane of entry into the anterior chamber. For the first planar incision, three types of incisions can be made in SICS. They are the frown, straight and chevron. What do they look like? This is the frown, this is the straight and this is the chevron. The chevron produces the least amount of astigmatism but is technically difficult and hence not commonly performed. Here a frown incision is made with a number 15 blade or a razor blade fragment. A crescent knife is then used to dissect a scleral tunnel to about 1.5 mm into clear cornea that is the second plane of the triplanar incision. The internal width of the tunnel should be greater than that of the external width. A side port incision is useful for extra maneuverability and for easy removal of subincisional cortex. It is made with a lance blade temporarily. Viscoelastic is then injected to maintain the anterior chamber and to protect the corneal endothelium. Capsule staining is optional. Triplan blue is injected into the anterior chamber and washed out after about 30 seconds. This stains the anterior capsule making it more easily visible. This is especially useful in a white cataract. A continuous curvilinear capsular excess is the preferred method of capsulotomy. A bent 26 gauge needle can be used in which case it is referred to as a needle cystitome. Alternately, a ureteritor forceps may be used. Now the anterior chamber is entered with a keratome. This is the third plane of the triplanar incision and the incision is extended on either side to complete the internal opening of the tunnel. Hydro procedures are employed to free the nucleus from the rest of the lens and to reduce it as in reduce it in size to enable easy removal from the small incision. Hydro dissection is performed by injecting balanced salt solution just under the rexus margin. The fluid travels and separates the nucleus from the cortex and the capsule. In hydro delineation, balanced salt solution is injected into the mass of the nucleus to separate the soft epinucleus from the harder inner main nucleus. The nucleus is then prolapsed into the anterior chamber using a Sinsky hook. The nucleus is then removed from the eye with the help of a wire vectus. You can see the same thing in the operating view. The wire vectus is only one of various ways to remove the nucleus in SICS. We shall see some of the others. Here the vectus has a provision for continuous infusion of BSS to increase the pressure in the anterior chamber and to help push out the nucleus. In visco expression viscoelastic is injected continuously into the anterior chamber instead of BSS. As the name suggests the nucleus is sandwiched between a vectus below and another instrument such as an iris repositor or a Sinsky hook above. In phaco fracture various instruments are used to divide the nucleus into two or more pieces to aid easy removal. In this technique a 26 gauge needle is used to engage the nucleus and remove it. The Blumenthal technique makes use of an anterior chamber maintainer to maintain a positive pressure in the anterior chamber and a sheets glide to remove the nucleus. The cortex is then removed with the help of a Simcoe irrigation aspiration cannula 
while simultaneous irrigation is done with BSS. Viscoelastic is then injected and a posterior chamber intraocular lens is placed in the capsular bag and rotated into place with the help of a Sinsky hook. Viscoelastic is removed, the side port is closed by stromal hydration and the conjunctiva is reapposed with the help of a bipolar cautery. An antibiotic and steroid is injected subconjunctivally. So that's it for today. If you like what you saw, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update from AP's 5 minute ophthalmology pearls. You may watch my other videos by clicking on the thumbnails. Please leave a note in the comment section if you wish for any particular topic to be covered in future. Look forward to weekly updates. Thank you for watching.